So let's recall that a polynomial function is any function that can be written in this form. ax times x to the n plus an minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to a naught. The largest power of x we call the degree. And the coefficient from the, from the largest power of x is called the leading coefficient. So n is called the degree. And an is called the leading coefficient. What I'd like to do today is take a look at some examples of the graphs of polynomials of various degrees. So let's take a look at an example where n equals 1. Take a look at the example y equals f of x equals 3x minus 2. We know that a first degree polynomial, which this is, the largest power of x is x to the 1, is uh, called linear, and its graph is a straight line. We have experience graphing straight lines. see right away that the y-intercept is minus 2. To find the x-intercept, we set y equals 0. If we set y equals 0, we're going to find the x-intercept. We'll set y equals 0, so 3x minus 2 equals 0. So we end up with 3x equals 2, or x equals uh, 2 thirds. which is right about there. And so we have a line going uphill to the right through these two points. Pretty much what we expected. Let's take a look at another example of a different degree. This time we'll take a look at an example where the degree equals 2. And let's consider y equals g of x. We'll give it a different name this time, g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. We know right away this is a second degree polynomial. Its largest power of x is 2. And we know that the graphs of second degree polynomials are always parabolas. We might remember from high school that this is a right-side-up parabola because the leading coefficient, there's an invisible 1 right in front of this x squared, the leading coefficient is positive. Positive means we have a right-side-up parabola. We can find the x-intercepts, again, by setting y equals 0. And if we do that, we end up with x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So we have x minus 3, x minus 1, so x equals 1 or 3. We can also figure out the y-intercept. By setting x equal to 0, in which case we end up with y equals 0 minus 0 plus 3, or y equals 3. So graphing this, go across the x-axis at 1 and 3, and we go across the y-axis at 3. We know it's a parabola, we know it's right side up. Given those three points, we have a pretty good idea of what a shape must be.
you studied a great deal about the parabolas in high school. Let's take a look at another example. This time with n equals 3. This is a cubic. I want to begin with this example. y equals h of x. And I will let h of x be x cubed minus uh, 4x. And that factors as x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And we can see right away that this thing crosses the x-axis at 0, 2, and minus 2. So it crosses the x-axis here, here, and here. I'm not going to go through the details of how one would graph this. We will study that later in the course. But this graph looks very much like that. And I want to take a look at yet another example where n equals 3. This time, I want to take a look at the example y equals k of x equals minus x cubed uh, minus x. This one looks very much like this. If I draw a quick sketch. And so we have four examples of polynomials on the blackboard, one of degree one, one of degree two, and two of them of degree three. Now I want you to notice some commonalities of all these. For one, each of these graphs can be drawn without picking up your, in this case, chalk from the blackboard. All of these graphs are in fact continuous, and all graphs of all polynomials are continuous. No breaks. Secondly, the graphs of all these polynomials are nice and smooth. They don't have any sharp corners like, say, absolute value of x. second degree polynomial goes from downhill to uphill. What we have here, a pre-calculus book might call a turnaround. So this graph has one turnaround. It's a second degree polynomial with one turnaround. Here we have a third degree polynomial with one, two turnarounds. And here we have a third degree polynomial which has no turnarounds at all. So an nth degree polynomial has, at most, n minus 1 turnarounds. So we can see from this example that it isn't always n minus 1. Here, n equals 3, n minus 1 is 2, and yet this has no turnarounds at all. And in a similar vein, an nth degree polynomial crosses the x-axis at most n times. most 
10 times. And in addition, we could talk about what sometimes is, is known as the end behavior of the, of the graph. Notice that the parabola, this parabola goes uphill in both directions. And of course, if we had a parabola where the leading coefficient was negative, that would go down in both directions. Whereas this odd degree polynomial, both these odd degree polynomials go up in one direction and down in the other direction. That's typical of polynomials. So a polynomial of even degree goes up in both directions or down in both directions. Whereas a polynomial of odd degree goes up at one end and down in the other. And lastly, we can always tell whether a polynomial goes up to the right or down to the right by taking a look at the sign of its leading coefficient. A polynomial with positive leading coefficient goes up at the right end while the polynomial with negative leading coefficient goes down at the right end. 